Hello and welcome to another selection of the hottest Q&As Reddit has to offer. George Carlin said think of how stupid the average person is, and realize half of them are stupider than that. What real life example have you seen that validates this view? There is a considerable overlap between the intelligence of the smartest bears and the dumbest tourists. Yosemite Park Ranger on why it's hard to design a bear-proof garbage can. I used to work in Banff National Park. One day at the end of the tour I was driving some guests back to their hotel and a woman was adamant that Banff was clearly a very dangerous place to visit since we just let wild animals run around everywhere. They should be in cages. Had to fight the urge to throw her off the bus pretty hard. Some other gems that came up in the past include a guest insisting he needed to change money they got in BC to Alberta currency, not a real thing. A man arrived very irate that the entire Trans-Canada Highway was not lit with proper street lamps every 100 yards, that would be a stunning waste of energy, not to mention probably cost more than our national budget. And your car has lights on it. More than a few have grossly underestimated the distances involved in a country like Canada. No, you cannot drive from Calgary to Toronto and back in the same day for lunch at the CN Tower. I worked at a bank. Mobile depositing had just became a thing. We received a picture of someone's cash for deposit. Yay! See bro, just wait like 2 hours and take another photo of the same cash and deposit it again. And again and again. Whoa! Instant money. Yeah bro, instant money. F we're gonna be so rich off this $84. A woman I used to work with who insisted that any animal could reproduce with any other animal. She believed that sperm from any animal was the same and that DNA was irrelevant. She believed this because she once saw some sickly, possibly deformed puppies and decided that they must have been half dog and half rat. If she ever saw a centaur she'd probably be buying lots of horse sperm. Ends up with a reverse centaur. The fact Florida had to tell people not to shoot at the hurricane. Even better, the fact that NOAA even has to have a section on their site explaining why using nuclear weapons against hurricanes is far worse than the worst idea you can possibly imagine. But at least nobody with actual access or the power to authorize the use of nuclear weapons would ever have an idea that blindingly stupid. One of my nieces had a cold as a toddler and was breathing through her mouth. My ex Bill flipped out because he didn't want her to get carbon monoxide poisoning from breathing through her mouth instead of her nose, the normal way, I read things like this and start asking myself, why would anyone think this? How would this even work? And then I realize, this is the kind of stupid I don't want to understand. Yeah. I used to try and educate people like this, then I realized it's like playing chess with a pigeon. They'll just poop all over the board and strut around like they've won regardless. I teach 6th grade. One time a parent came to me after trying to help their child with math homework and asked, what number is X worth? It feels like it changes with every problem. I don't know if this is satire or not, but good job. It is not. The parent came to me after school, without their child, because they knew something was wrong and didn't want to look stupid in front of their kid. This is filed in my brain of parent reactions I can't fathom. Along with a mom that year who asked if her child could play piano in marching band. On September 11th the general manager called his daughter who was attending ASU to wake her up and make sure she saw what was going on. The customer service manager said. It won't be on her TV yet, Arizona is two hours behind us, why didn't Australia warn us about 9-11? After all they are several hours ahead. Reminds me of a Facebook post that went, just found out China is like 12 hours in front of US of US. Why didn't they tell US about 9-11? Fuck China 3 billion people died. Not verbatim but close. I worked at Little Caesars and we were proofing the dough for pizza. My boss said, at 7 PM, that the dough needed to rise for 12 hours, and took out her calculator to do the math. So I said um that's gonna be 7 AM. Then she said the dough will expire in 48 hours and started doing the math again. I told her it would expire two days from now, and she said that's kinda weird how that works out huh? I quit shortly after that. The most surprising thing here for me is that Little Caesars bakes fresh dough. And actually bothers with a long leavening time. Just scroll down a web page or Facebook feed and have a look at the ads. Things like only 2% can solve this puzzle poop like that. Those ads get posted so much because they actually work on a lot of people. My fave if those see what your, fandom slash whatever, name is based on your date of birth slash hometown slash first and last letters of your mom's maiden name slash etc. Things. 
like you have a chart, and people post their results, and it's a goldmine for anyone looking for the answers to those pesky security questions lmao. There are still people who fall for if you post your password it comes up as asterisks. Watch. I'm an insurance claims adjuster. If you truly knew how many stupid drivers you're sharing the road with, you'd never drive again. Edit because I keep getting this question, I avoid driving whenever possible. I have a car, but I take the bus to slash from work. I never drive at night. I work in highway safety, can confirm. I can no longer count on two hands the number of people I've stopped within the middle lane of traffic on a freeway, with no bigger problem than a flat tire. When I question them as to why they stopped in the middle of a freeway, the typical answer is either the vehicle wouldn't go any further, or they don't want to damage their rim. I swear to whatever you want me to swear to, people will put the well-being of the rim on their car above their own safety and even the safety of their children. At the start of working from home due to COVID, I had a few users submit tickets for connectivity issues. These tickets got through two lines of support before landing in my queue. Turns out that the corporate Wi-Fi doesn't follow you home and you need home internet in order to connect to the VPN. That's freaking hilarious, in the saddest way possible. In grade 10, we had a science test, and the teacher gave one point for putting a date on the paper, and one point for your name on the paper, and then there were 98 points for the rest of the test. A guy sitting in front of me got zero. Five one hundredths didn't write the date and only wrote his first name. That's ducking hilarious. Reminds me of the time my classmate copied the test answers of my other smarter classmate in second grade. He got caught because he copied the name too. In the 80s, A&W attempted to compete with McDonald's Quarter Pounder Burger by selling a third pounder for the same price. The operation failed tremendously, with virtually no one buying the burger. When they surveyed customers for an explanation, the majority of customers responded that they didn't want to pay the same price for less meat. Their customers genuinely believed that one-third was less than one-fourth and refused to try the new A&W burger because of it. Sounds like they had beef with fractions. Infantryman was told to trim the hedges. So he lifted the lawnmower. His buddy started it. As a brand new medic, I spent about six hours pulling finger meat from the hedges. Update, sorry, I'm a redderpin on a phone. For clarification, it was early 2004 after OIF won in the 82nd. I was a PFC with only a year and a half in service. We bandaged him, then used tourniquet, temporarily. Senior medics took him to the ER. I was field sanitation qualified, so I was left in charge of cleanup. Six hours was excessive, but after we pulled most of the meat and bone out, we had to hose down the hedges, the ground, the grass he bled in, the ground slash floor outside and inside where he left a decent amount of blood had to be rinsed and sterilized. The mower had to be rinsed and cleaned. It had some damage from the drop. The private that started the mower had to be smoked by his and co. We finished in about four hours of actual work with two hours of ducking off mixed in, cause the sham shield is the real deal was at a party and someone's poopy old truck got stuck in some mud so instead of sobering up and coming back the next day, he makes a Molotov cocktail with gas and throws it at the truck. The truck caught fire and was completely destroyed. Jason? Whenever you've got a problem, throw a Molotov cocktail and then you've got a different problem. Knew a kid who drank bleach to prove it wouldn't kill you. A week later he showed up at school after taking a shot. He said he proved his point when the teacher asked why he was bragging about it. Mr. Hawk just said but you cannot argue that without that medical treatment you'd have died though you even said you have stomach damage and a burn esophagus yourself. This kid was bragging about that. He was not mentally disabled or otherwise. He was just that kind of idiot. When I was in high school, we were reading a short story about what would have happened if the Japanese attacked us back with nuclear weapons after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. A girl in my class raised her hand and said something along the lines of why does this matter? None of it is real anyway. The teacher had to ask her to clarify, but this girl thought World War II and the bombing of Japan were just from a movie and didn't actually happen. The best part is, the girl was half Japanese. What would have been your answer or question? Leave it in the comments below. Slap that like and subscribe button for more, and check out the link in the video description for even more answers. Peace out, and catch you in the next video.